unfortunately for you, it is Jim, and what do you know, it's Dark Souls 3 again. Of all the weapons to come from the two DLCs, the Aquamarine Dagger was regarded to be one of the most underwhelming additions, right beside the Follower's Torch and the White Birch Bow. It was just another dagger with split magic damage and a weapon art that cost more stamina to swing than a greatsword. As of recording this video here in September 2017, if you research the Aquamarine Dagger, you will only find lukewarm reception at best. So if you use this weapon, you are a fucking retard. Or a silent disregard of its existence at worst. In all fairness, the dagger was completely overshadowed by the likes of weapons such as the Split Leaf Greatsword, Gales, Demon Scar, and so on. It is no wonder why seemingly no one in the community brings up the dagger as a weapon you can actually use in Dark Souls to kill people with. The only times you might ever see the dagger is when a sorcery spamming mage is giving their opponent the signal that they want to die. Just Kill me now, please. And thus, the dagger has faded off into obscurity, scarcely seen anywhere or used by anyone. But after picking up the weapon myself to really get a feel for what the dagger has going for it, I am now a believer that the Aquamarine dagger is vastly underrated. What you just saw right there was the Aquamarine nearly pulling off a thousand damage with a five hit pseudo combo. Who would expect that from this small looking dagger? Not me, definitely not that guy. There were a couple of whispers around the community saying that the dagger had quote unquote potential to it, but we never really discovered to what extent this potential could go. While trying to test out this weapon myself, I came across too many players who didn't give the Aquamarine the respect I now firmly believe it deserves. After a patch earlier this year, FromSoft actually decreased the stamina consumption of the weapon art immensely. The first usage that comes to mind is that the weapon art is now spammable. That's a given. Thinking that you can just R1 out of its chain could potentially lead up to 1300 damage before I even run out of stamina using it. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. First things first, let's talk about its normal moveset. It's a dagger, obviously, and daggers are quick. They're best when they're two-handed as the first R1 extends out your body in a lightning fast poke attack. The rest of the R1s are incredible at keeping pressure and catching rolls. It's also got fast roll attacks that have deceptive phantom range. All of your moves are typically too quick to be parried, but this depends on the latency between both you and your opponent. Sometimes you might just get tank parried. Be aware of that. Oh my god. Side note, something you may not have known is that when you two-hand the Aquamarine, your R1s cannot be deflected by Perseverance. Your weapon art, on the other hand, can be deflected. I suppose this is because you technically one-hand your weapon when you use the weapon art, which would cause a deflection with other hand weapons such as rapiers and spears, whereas if you two-hand the dagger, doesn't do it. So the Aquamarine, off the bat, has some good things going for it. Fast attacks, roll catches, this is the core of what you need. But what prevents you from using a Corvian Great Knife instead? It's got longer range, more roll catching opportunity, and its weapon art is not only strong, but it combos into another R1. And this is where the Aquamarine's weapon art, Crystal Blade, comes in, and ultimately where the dagger truly shines. Crystal Blade's first R1 has forward momentum, allowing you to close the gap for whiff punishing where the range of a normal R1 would not hit. Crystal Blade's R2 can be used as a roll catch once you do the standard combo of R1, R1, then hit him with an R2 as they try to roll away. The R2 also has active frames all along the right side of your character. If your opponent tries to roll past you on your right, they're getting hit. There's also a sprinting crystal blade attack where you press L2 as you sprint, but it's a mixed bag. It's not the fastest running attack ever, but it does have some range to it. And this entire time, I've neglected to talk about the build that you need in order to even wield the Aquamarine. At the very least, what you're going to need is dex and intelligence, putting both at the weapon soft cap of 40. 
Where you go from there is ultimately your decision, but what I did was I prioritized vigor and endurance first, then put the rest into attunement and faith so I could use some miracles of the situation called for it. That includes force, replenishment, or tears of denial. Let's say I don't want any spells. I could ditch the faith and attunement and put all that into vitality so I could utilize heavier armor and take more hits. In all honesty, I do prefer having equipment load below 30% so I could fast roll with the Aquamarine. This makes rolling in and out of danger simple to do and gives me plenty of opportunity to keep up pressure and stay aggressive. And to just hit further home why I think the Aquamarine is a hidden gem, I have some more footage of it in action. I can't stress enough that the Crystal Blade weapon art is where the potential for mix-ups and pseudo-combos become a reality. The Aquamarine spices up the flow of combat. It's nothing truly groundbreaking for Dark Souls 3 PvP. It most definitely does not override the current meta of spacing your opponent out and whiff punishing them with endless R1s. In fact, that's the entire name of the game with the Aquamarine. But now, who knew that adding a trick transformation of sorts to your weapon would make it fun to use? It's so familiar, really. It's almost as if there was another game that had trick weapons that was going in the right direction and making combat both fun and fast-paced, but that that game was ultimately bogged down by its netcode and these goddamn bell-ringing women. But I digress. In conclusion, the Aquamarine dagger isn't widely known, mainly due to its initial reception. Why use a dagger that costs so much stamina to use? That's a good question. A question that FromSoft actually answered with a patch that ended up being glossed over and pushed to the side by better and more popular DLC weapons. I think people tend to forget that it is still a dagger, and daggers tend to be good at doing their job. What elevates the Aquamarine to Corvian Great Knight status is its weapon. Art. Don't get me wrong, the Corvian Great Knife is still a powerful dagger. I would just put the two daggers in the same tier if I were to make a tier list of some kind. Some in the community were able to recognize that it had potential, but few dared to see how far the rabbit hole really went. And while I'm not entirely good at the dagger, I can still say with certainty that it is underrated. And...
And that's about it for me. Hope you learned something new today that you might not have known yesterday. If you liked what you saw, feel free to leave a like or comment discussing your thoughts. I'd love to hear it. Though I may not get to them all, I do try to read every comment. Subscribe if you want to see any more of my trash thrown your way, but by all means, have yourself a great day and a good night. Oh, and be sure to tell someone you care about that you love and appreciate them. If Dark Souls has taught me anything, we don't live forever. Best we leave this life with no regrets. See you next time, y'all. Já viu o rico namorar pobre?